everybody, Terrence Pop here with another episode from, you guessed it, The Lair! I had somebody send me an article in regards to why women get married. And I was going to do just a response to that one particular article. But as I read it, a couple things went off. Uh, I'm like, you know what? There seems to be a pattern here. So I went through and I read almost eight other articles which are basically the same thing. And uh, I came across these uh, common themes in these articles. And uh, instead of picking them apart, I'm just going to go into the themes here. Because you know, because these women seem to be two-dimensional when they explain shit. I'm thinking at it, oh, at it with like a three- and four-dimensional mind. And you're going to see how almost all of these are shallow as fucking hell. 95% of the dudes that are married out there, their wives probably said yes to them for the wrong fucking reasons. It's pretty goddamn deep. So here we go. Number one. Uh, this one came up in three of the articles. Basically, she, uh, she threw the checklist away. She realized she was becoming too picky. You know, and she realized that, you know. Nobody's perfect. And I have this stupid checklist, which is crazy long. And, you know, a guy who would make this checklist is going to get a, a 10 chick. I'm not a 10 chick. So I got to settle for less. So... In a way, it's good. I mean, still, the settling thing doesn't really sit well with men. But, uh, you know, if a woman is, you know, awakened enough to realize, you know, hey, you know, I think this list is too fucking long and unrealistic. And she throws the list away and can change her path and help forge her future and a future with her and a husband and everything goes forward. That's kind of the most healthy one on this list. Uh, because it's always a good thing when somebody realizes uh, an internal shortcoming within themselves and take uh, corrective uh, actions to fix it. Um, a lot of people, a lot of women today are surfing through life without rudder, without a rudder and they're going the fuck off course and nobody's telling them they're going off course because uh, they're happy and, uh, you know, they have self-esteem, which means they're happy with who they are and so forth. And uh, it just takes you in a big fucking circle and see my video life when you're stupid on that. Number two. My parents loved him. I was not crazy about him. But my parents loved him. They love me. They want what's best for me, so I married the guy. You know, if you don't emotion, if you're not emotionally invested in this dude and you're only marrying him because your mother and father said so, there's a word for that, and it comes from the old school, which is arranged fucking marriages. Why don't you just do that? Well, instead of go through all the horse shit, all the time, the money, whatever. I mean, if you're going to accept what your parents think or your family thinks, then have them just find somebody for you, and that's just fucking it. There you go. All right, number three, uh, ticking the clock. Or this is one of the more common ones, and this one was touched in almost all of them. Uh, I just call it, uh, you know, ran out of time itis or running out of time itis. They haven't quite hit the wall yet, but they're damn fucking close. They are danger fucking close, and time is walking in on their position, and it's not going to end pretty. They do what they got to do. They settle for whatever's available because they're almost out of time. They're probably in the middle or to the second half of their second fertility window. They know what the deal is, and uh, they were wise enough to realize that, hey, you know, feminism, me, you know, not getting married or having children or getting married at like 37 and having to do all these fucking fertility treatments, and it may or may not be the case that I actually have a child, and yada, 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 and there you go, number three. Uh, let's see. Uh, number number four. This is a double-edged sword here. You're going to love this one. A lot of these women get married <clears throat> because they didn't want to be the last one or the last single one left. All right. Number. This is the number one reason. This is my, my opinion. This is the number one reason for the divorce of 13 years. Uh, you know, after 13 years, they're probably sick of it. They know they got the 10-year mark under the bag. They're going to get a huge chunk of the pension uh, cash and prizes. They're not going to have any more kids. And if they didn't want to be the last single one by 13 years, most of her friends are getting it or are divorced. So they, she doesn't want to be the last married one either. So that's the double-edged sword right there. Anyone who can be guided by the opinions of somebody else is somebody who you do not want in your life. Because 
if somebody can influence them to fucking just, you know, marry you and then divorce you, then what fucking good are they? You know, you, you get married to have somebody in your life for, you know, the rest of your days. A lot of guys out there, you know, got married, they took it serious. And, uh, you know, to the, the bitter end, make it work. 13 years, you're in the shitter. Okay, number five. And this one is kind of sickening, and it was mentioned in over half of them. It's basically anyone I can get. All these women are unappealing, either in action, too many kids, you know, all kinds of other crazy ass bullshit that goes on in their life. And uh, basically, it's anyone they can get and anyone that they can stand. Who the fuck wants this? All right, this is how you wind up with Xbox sex. And I explain that it's like you're, you bend your girlfriend over or your wife over, you're banging the shit out of her, and she's going for the next high score on whatever game she's playing on Xbox. What good is that? The exact opposite of that is a dude banging a woman and then opening the paper and reading it on her back. You know, that's fucked up. That's not, that's nothing healthy, man. That's, that's just sickening. Okay, number six is kind of like number four, and they get talked into it by their friends. So if they can get talked into marrying you, then they can get talked into divorcing you. And again, who the fucking wants that? You're the one that should be guiding your life, not letting somebody else talk you into steering in some wazoo courses that lead you nowhere, nowhere good. Uh, heck, they'll even drive you into, I don't know, the big fat Bermuda Triangle of the Cat Lady Starter Kit. Fuck that shit. Number seven. Is that basically right along number three? It's a little different though. Where number three is either before the wall or just before the wall. Number seven is after they hit the wall and they realize how fucked up it is. They know their sexual market value is plummeting. They settle for whatever they could get after that point. So it's Mr. Good Enough. These probably don't wind up in happy long happy long-term relationships. But who am I? I'm not a marriage counselor. I'm just a dude who's seen thousands and thousands of breakups and heartache over the years and uh, a lot of it can be traced back to this fucking bullshit all right slipped one by the goalie now i've said this before on the channel any women between the ages of 18 and 28 this is how their fertility works they have pulled the fucking goalie the two defensemen are in the penalty box pulling majors so it's a five on three scenario it's almost guaranteed even in in some games, the goalie himself can score from across the ice. You slip in one by the goalie, and they decide that, hey, you knocked me up, or you're going to get married and ride it out. All right, now in today's day and age, without all the social pressures and the women who have all the support of the government, this is a terrible reason to get married. Okay, it's probably not going to work out. And in regards to if you marry her, you might get a better deal in family court not really because there are no laws that actually force a woman or a girlfriend uh, to make the child uh, part of your life you get to visit on both on both scenarios you still you're still a visitor so there's no reason to get married if you slip them by the goalie so i'm just saying don't do it all right number nine this is the number one reason for the pimp tart wife institute or the uh, just straight up wife institute who are here uh, they get married to you because the money's great in the beginning. And then, uh, you know, the dick to money ratio kind of runs down on them. They realize that they're going to get a, you know, half of your shit, part of your property, you know, maybe one or two cars out of the deal, alimony and child support. And you have the money to pay it. There you go. So, dudes, if you have a lot of money and you have a woman sniffing around, act like you're poor. All right, don't don't even don't even entertain that shit unless you want to be a, a sugar daddy, and then make sure you're snipped so you don't slip them by the goalie, and then do what you got to do. I mean, you both agree on it. You're both adults. It is what it is. And finally, number ten, he's fucking gorgeous, or he's a bad boy. Okay, that you know they're madly in love. All right, okay. The, now this is supposedly the picture perfect reason to get married. You're madly in love. Okay, on the pop scale, looks fade usually one point every seven years beyond the age of 25. So if she was a seven when you married her at 25, 14 years later, she's a five or he's a five. 
because uh, the same thing happens for dudes. Um, the only only thing that offsets the looks factor for dudes is money and power. Uh, women are attracted to that shit. It's beyond looks. I don't understand it myself. Maybe it's just part of their nature, but it is what it is. Okay, and then you have the bad boy. Uh, bad boys will usually leave when they get tired of your shit or they get bored. Uh, either that or they wind up in prison, dead, or flat bush broke. And they mooch off you, which gets old. There you go. Those are my 10 reasons, the 10 things I found in regards to why women get married. Or why they say yes to husbands who propose or whatever. Uh, it's stupid. Now, um, I'm looking at, uh, I was watching some of the footage of the 2017 uh, Emmys. And there's so much comedy gold in that. I would really appreciate if you guys send me some opinions or uh, some insights of what you saw on the 2017 Emmys and help me assemble a list on things to uh, attack on that because from the little bit that I saw it was absolutely crazy. And on the flip side, uh, the people who participated in the 2017 Emmys is the culture that is now running Hollywood. They are now running your media outlets and they are catering specifically to less than 50% or if 50% of the population and they're alienating the other half. So perhaps uh, if there is a particular individual in the Emmys who is basically showing their ass or being a real fucking dickhead, maybe you should turn the TV off whenever they're on or not pay to see movies they're in and money talks and bullshit walks and those people will be retired pretty quickly. That's just my opinion. All right, well, that's it for me for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. You know, I kind of threw it together on the fly. I spent most of my time reading it. I didn't really rehearse this at all, so hopefully it works out. You guys have a good evening.